Okay, John chapter 3 reveals the way to heaven. I'll be talking to you today, ladies and gentlemen, on the subject of being born again. And this is something that Jesus uh, stressed in his teaching, and it's something we all need to know. You must be born again. And that's what we'll be talking about here. So let's start it off here, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So this man, Nicodemus, he was a rabbi. He was part of the Jewish uh, Sanhedrin. And uh, obviously he knew the scriptures. He read the scriptures, but he did not know the Lord in truth. And that's what you're going to find out here. So obviously he saw something about Jesus. He probably saw many of the miracles and heard stories about what was taking place in the ministry of Jesus, the Messiah. So he came to him by night, probably because of the pressure of uh, people around him that wanted nothing to do with Jesus. They rejected him as Messiah. So he wanted a more intimate setting, a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. And that's what he got. So he went to Jesus and he said, look, we, I see these miracles. And uh, obviously, uh, God is with you. And Jesus cut right to the chase. And he talked about being born again. He says, yeah, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So it's a spiritual sight that the Lord is talking about right there. So let's go now, verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So, Jesus already told him that if he wasn't born again, he wouldn't be able to see the kingdom of God. So spiritual sight comes, folks. When you're born again, there's a spiritual sight, a spiritual understanding that will come. That's how it was uh, with me, and that's how it is with everyone uh, who is born again of the Spirit. Very often, you'll hear people, including myself, talk about how the Word of God came alive uh, to them. Suddenly, uh, the Scriptures were illuminated, and that's a work of the Holy Spirit. So here Jesus is uh, talking again, and now he's telling them, look, if you're not born again, uh, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So ladies and gentlemen, you need to know, if you've never been born again, you're not in the kingdom of God. That's something you must know. What, what could be more important than know, knowing whether you're right with God? So Jesus goes on to say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, what he's saying there, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there's a fleshly birth. That, that's being born physically, okay? So each and every one of us, you were born physically, so you were born of the flesh. So now Jesus said there's another birth, and that's what he's talking about here. You're born again of the Spirit. And he makes it very clear. He says, ye must be born Again, didn't say possibly, could be, might be, should be. No, he said you must be born again. And that's the word for you today, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to go to heaven when you die, could be today, could be tonight. When you die, if you're not born again, you're not inside the kingdom, folks. You would die in your sins. You're spiritually dead without Christ. That's what I want to get across to you today. So you must be born again. This new birth, it's called sometimes spiritual birth. It must take place inside your heart before you die, before you leave 
this planet. Let's pick it up here. Uh, verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth or wishes it, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? So uh, Nicodemus was obviously uh, thinking in the natural. He couldn't comprehend what Jesus was trying to tell him. So he's thinking of a physical birth, and it, it, he just couldn't grab it. So uh, look what he says. The wind blows where it listeth the wishes, and you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell whence it cometh. In other words, you can't tell where it's coming from, where it's going. So, um, you know, when you see the wind blow, you don't actually, I, I say the same thing. Oh, look at the wind blowing. You, what you see is the effect of the wind. In other words, if there's a tree nearby, a palm tree, and the wind's blowing, you're going to see the leaves, the branches on that tree go back and forth, okay? That's the effect of the wind. So he says it's the same way with the spirit. When the spirit's moving, okay, pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, uh, you don't see it, but you will see an effect in a person's life. When a person's born again, there will be a change that takes place. Why? Because the Spirit of God has changed that person. Oh, yes. So uh, that's what we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. When we're talking about uh, the unseen, you know, you cannot see the Holy Spirit. It's the same way with demons. You know, there are demons everywhere uh, in this world, folks. You do not see them, okay? Uh, but they're there. And it's the same way with, with the angels of God. They are everywhere, even though you do not uh, see them. In fact, if you could look at... Um, the Old Testament book of 2 Kings, and look at chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. You could look that up for yourself, and you'll find Elisha with his servant, and his servant saw the uh, horses and chariots of those who were against them, and he, he was becoming fearful. And, you know, he called Elijah, what shall we do? And, you know, Elijah basically told him, don't be afraid, fear not. He says, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And then Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. That's powerful. So what took place here? Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. And what happened suddenly uh, that spiritual veil was removed and angels were everywhere in horses and chariots of fire. You see that, folks? It's comforting to know that God is on your side. Hallelujah. So uh, there's, a, uh, there's a battle going on, folks. And hear me now. There is a battle going on for your soul. Whether you believe it or not, there's a battle going on for your soul. The devil would love to see you in hell. And I'm here to preach Christ to you today, folks. I want you to see the truth. I want you to hear the truth. I want you to be born again so you don't end up in a place called hell. So being born again, ladies and gentlemen, look at 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 23. This is what Peter said. He said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So uh, Peter equated the new birth with, with the, the seed, the word of God. So in other words, what I'm doing here today, I'm preaching the word of God. I'm sowing seed, okay? I'm nothing. But, you know, I, I, I've been saved. I'm born again. Any Christian can do the same thing. You preach the word. You share the gospel with others. So you're sowing seed. And the seed that you're sowing, it's incorruptible. Why? Because it's the word of God. So what happens is when you preach the word, if a person receives it and believes it and believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, they realize they need to be saved. They will be born again of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's good news, folks. So uh, it, it all works together 
uh, perfectly. And that's why Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said those who believe will be saved, those who don't will be damned. It's very, uh, very simple to understand. Let's pick it up now, John chapter 3, verse 11 Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Now right here, folks, uh, maybe you don't see it, Jesus is revealing his deity, his, his divinity. Look at that. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So here he is. He's on earth. He's talking to this man, Nicodemus, but he says here, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So obviously in the flesh, he was standing there on earth. But because Jesus Christ is God. Hear me now. The divinity of Christ is everywhere. God is everywhere, folks. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. It's a beautiful thing, folks. You know, uh, when, when you get um, the realization, the understanding about the deity, the, the divinity of Jesus Christ, it is a game changer. That's how it was for me. You know, growing up Catholic, you know, I, I I didn't really understand the deity of Christ. I mean, it was always Big Mary and Little Jesus. <laughs> That's the way it was. I wasn't thinking Jesus Christ is God. So when you're born again, when you get an understanding, folks, uh, about the deity of, of Christ and what he has done for you, my, oh my, that's good stuff. That's good stuff, folks. And that's what I'm trying to present to you today, who this man Christ is, what he's done for you, and that you can be born again of the Spirit. Glory to his name. So let's pick it up here now. Verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that, uh, that verse right there, that's John 3, 16, very famous uh, verse. You know, some preachers can preach on that for weeks, months, on that one verse. I'm not going to do that today. So it, it's such a powerful verse. But let me go back now to... Uh, verse 14, it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What's that talking about? Very briefly, uh, back in the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 21, the people of Israel, they were rebelling against the Lord. They complained against God. They complained against Moses. They wanted to go back to Egypt and the whole uh, story. And what happened, God sent the judgment. He sent serpents, snakes, uh, amongst them. And those snakes started to bite the people of Israel. And you know what happened? They were dying. One by one, they were dying. That's heavy, folks. And obviously, the people realized what was happening. They started saying, oh, you know, they were repenting and saying, oh, stop this. And um, the Lord told Moses to make a serpent of brass. And now picture this. Uh, they're being bitten by these poisonous snakes. And now God tells Moses to make a serpent uh, of brass, make a, a thing out of brass in the shape of a serpent and hold it up for them to see. So you've got to realize the sun's going to be shining on that brazen uh, serpent. And, and God basically said whoever was bitten and looks upon that serpent, they would be healed. Now, folks, that's what happened, and uh, I want to show you, that was a type of Christ, what, what took place there. You see, we're, we're a bunch of sinners. We're like the people of Israel. Rebellion against Almighty God. 
And here he lifted up the serpent. Christ was lifted up on the cross. That serpent had no sin, had no poison. You see that? So it's a type of Christ. Christ went to the cross. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Isaiah 45 and 22, it says, Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. Listen, for I am God and there is none else. So if you look upon Jesus, you put your faith in Jesus, folks, you can be saved. So I want you to know, folks, you like the people of Israel. Without Christ, you're spiritually dead. You're in danger. Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the only way out, folks. Uh, don't miss this. You're a sinner. The wages of your sin, you earned it, is death, spiritual death right now. If you've never been born again, truly born again of the Spirit, you are spiritually dead. You need the life that is found in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. So look at that promise. It says that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's 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 forever, folks. You die, you go to be with the Lord, you'll be in heaven, okay? Everlasting life. But right now, if you don't know the Lord, your, your soul is in danger, okay? Don't miss that. So uh, eternal life, everlasting life, this is good stuff, okay? You don't need to go on uh, another cruise, ladies and gentlemen. People always, you know, you're looking for stuff in this world, to, to pamper your flesh, to make you feel good. You go out and get drunk again, another party. You look at, you're always looking for another thrill. You, you ever notice that? Uh, you're looking for more excitement. You know, people have that term that they use, YOLO. <laughs> I didn't realize this till recently, YOLO. Well, what's YOLO? You only live once. In other words, let's do it. Let's, whatever you can do. You know, people have what's known as a bucket list. I, I want to do this. I want to go on 50 cruises before I die. It's party, party, party. And then next thing you know, the person dies. I, I want you to uh, hear me, folks. Next time you go to a wake or a funeral, I want you to look at that casket, the person sitting inside that casket, and, and ask yourself the question, did that person know the Lord? Did that person ever come to faith in Christ? Was that person ever truly born again of the Spirit? If they weren't, folks, hear me now, they died in their sins. What you're looking at is just the remains. That's the body. It's a tent. It's a, it's a tabernacle. They're not there. The real person left, okay? That's how serious this thing is, folks. We're talking about being born again of the Spirit before you die. The good news, folks, is that Christ came into this world to pay the price for your sins. That's what he did. Look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Do you see how the world is described here, folks? It's called this present evil world. Whoa, folks, it's all going to burn one day. Only thing that matters is, do you know the Lord? Have you ever been saved? Have you ever been truly born again of the Spirit? And folks, when you put your faith in Christ, you pass from death unto life. Look at what Jesus said here in John chapter 5, verse 24. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. There's a spiritual transaction that takes place, folks. You're going from darkness 
into light. That's what takes place. From death to everlasting life. How does that happen? Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get back to John 3, verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I like that. S-A-V-E-D. Saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Do you see how uh, Christ is the center, folks? Faith in him, you're not condemned. But if you don't believe, you're, you're condemned already. So, so basically, if you've never been saved, you've never been born again, you're basically walking around with a stick of dynamite in your pocket with the fuse lit. I mean, you could die at any time. You must be born again before you die. That's what you need to hear uh, today, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So good news is that Christ is on your side. Uh, verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So very often you'll find people committing crimes at night. Why? People are sleeping. They like to do things, uh, catch people off guard, go steal their cars. Uh, you know, I see videos of people in local neighborhoods not too far from here. They got that ring camera, and then they show, look, look, the, 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 the people are walking here trying to break into cars, and they have them on film. They do it at night. They're not going to knock on your door and say, I'd like to break into your car right now if it's okay with you. Of course not, folks. They do it at night. That's the way evil works, you see. Uh, they don't want to be exposed. So something to keep in mind. Let's go now. Uh, verse 22, after these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized, and John also was baptizing in Ainan, near to Salim, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. So you know, if you read the Bible, that eventually John uh, had his head cut off. That's what happened. You know, he had a, that's a whole story in itself. But he beat the uh, he was baptizing before he was cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. So uh, keep in mind that John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way of the Lord. That's what he did. So he was preparing. He was the forerunner for Jesus Christ. He identified himself as nothing more than a voice in the wilderness. And if you go back to the book of Isaiah, uh, which John referred to, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, uh, the voice in the wilderness prepared the way for Yahweh Elohim. He prepared the way for God. Who did John the Baptist prepare the way for? He prepared the way for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So uh, some awesome stuff here, folks. It's an awesome thing to be born again. It's an awesome thing to know that you're right with God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 27, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. So, basically, John is telling his followers, he said, guys, you know, I told you, I am not the Christ. He's saying, I'm not the Messiah. He says, I'm sent before him. So, as I said, John was the forerunner for Jesus Christ. And he makes it clear that 
The one with the bride is the bridegroom. He was speaking of Christ. Christ is the bridegroom. Hear me now, folks. The church, the believers in Jesus Christ, both Jewish and Gentile, that is the bride. There's not two brides, by the way. God is not an adulterer, folks. There's one bride, and that is the church. That includes Jew and Gentile, believers in Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse uh, 31. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. So for the most part, folks, uh, most of the people rejected the testimony of Jesus Christ, especially the Jewish uh, people. He that cometh from above is above all. So that's speaking of Christ. He's, he came down, folks. Came down from heaven. He came from above. But we are of the earth. We're earthly without Christ. You see that? So uh, that's very important that you uh, see that. It says here now, For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son hath, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Could it be any clearer? A believer, ladies and gentlemen, in Christ, you have everlasting life. But if you are not a believer, hear it right here. The wrath of God is abiding on you right now. If you were to die in that condition, you would die in your sins, you would end up in hell. Very clear. I'm going to lay it out, folks. The wrath of God is upon you right now. No question about it. And I want to make it clear to you, ladies and gentlemen, there are not many roads. There are not many avenues, not many ways into heaven. Uh, don't listen to that nonsense, uh, that that that. Uh, that unity, that fake unity that says, no, whatever your religion, uh, we all believe in the same God. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Satan wants your soul. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It comes right against what Jesus Christ himself said. Jesus said this, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you don't come to Christ, you will never see heaven, folks. Hear me now. This stuff that's being preached is universalism, that you can believe whatever you want to believe in and still end up in heaven. You will not be there. I'm giving it to you straight today, folks. You will not be in heaven. There's one way. And this is why Christ came into the world. He came to take your sin upon, him, your, uh, upon himself. Your sin upon himself, folks. That's what he did. And without that, you're still in your sins uh, and the Bible makes it clear, John 8, 24, you shall die in your sins. So you can rant all you want about many roads to heaven. It means nothing in the sight of God. He knows it's not true. You think it's true. He knows it's not true. And let me close it out here. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name unto heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So it is one way. And is one name, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. The question I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen, is do you know him? Have you ever been saved? Have you ever been born again of the Spirit? Are you absolutely sure you're right with God? If you were to die tonight, where would you spend eternity? Is the wrath of God upon you right now? And, uh, you know, I encourage you folks, if you don't have a Bible, get yourself a Bible preferably get the King James. You want the real meat of the word? I should probably do a video on all the different versions. I've been reading books about all the words that were, uh, all the words that were removed. It's, it's kind of scary when you, when you see that, folks. So let me leave it right there, folks, and you be blessed and have a great day.